How's it going, my friend? I am here today with my friend Aaron from Cards for Connection, and we're going to be talking all about how to build and deepen your connection with your audience, and we're going live right now. Hello everybody, I am Ryan Rhodes with reformdesigns.biz and today I am here live with Aaron Hickok, AKA The Connectress from cardsforconnection.com. Aaron, why don't you say hello? Hi, hello Ryan, how are you? Doing good, how are you? Uh, I'm doing great, I'm on a magical adventure in Portland, Oregon and I get to talk to you, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, so uh, where, what are you guys doing? What, what kind of magical adventure are you on right now? Well, I am in the car with my dear friend, Captain Pat. He's driving. I'll see if I can give you a little view of the captain here. How's it and going? And we are, <laughs> uh, we just went to ecstatic dance, and uh, now we're about to go to a potluck. Uh, but in between, I'm jumping on a beautiful episode with you on Facebook, which just blows my mind that I can just like do this while we're driving. Some right. Days. It's it is pretty cool. Olga, Olga Summerhays has hopped on and says hello. Hi, Olga. How are you today? So, um, Aaron, we're gonna we're gonna hop right in here, and um, we're gonna talk about how to build deeper connections because you are what a lot of people have called the connectress. And so can you first of all, just talk a little bit about that and why that is and a little bit about who you are and almost like an intro for anyone who might not know. Sure, sure. So uh, my friends do call me the connectress. Uh, I have been I have been really committed to creating deeper connection in the world for quite some time. I've done that through nonprofit work and community organizing, community building, and most recently uh, by creating Cards for Connection. It's a card game that helps people deepen their friendships and connections with the people that they love and even strangers. And um, gosh, I think that covers it. Pre that covers it pretty well. <laughs> Okay, so can you give an example of um, of how Cards for Connection actually works? Like for someone who's never played it before, um, just what what does it typically look like whenever someone's playing the game? Great question. So Cards for Connection is kind of like a, a conscious Mad Libs, you know, like fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy. You just pick a card and you read it out loud. Um, so like for example, this one, I enjoy expressing myself through blank. And then you just answer the card. So right now I would say I enjoy expressing myself through uh, being live on Facebook. <laughs> it's pretty enjoyable uh, right now. And then people just take turns uh, laying the cards down the center until they've created a rainbow. So the cards are rainbow colors. So you just pick one of each. Of oh, so you colors. go through one of each color until uh, you get to the end basically. Yep, and so, you, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's like officially the way to play, but there are a ton of ways to play. I'm super into people making their own rules and playing in new ways. So Very that's cool. the basics. Pick a card out loud. That's the basics because what? Yes, the basics are just pick a card and read it out loud. Okay. So I um I do have to to give you props on this because we were actually we had the opportunity to meet each other in real 3D space the other day, and um, I went to hang out with you in Portland and there uh, we went to this networking event guys for um, all kinds of different people were there and a lot of us didn't know each other and we actually had the opportunity to use Aaron's game as a way to open up the connection in the room and and i've got to say it was a tangible shift in the energy in the room when we all started just opening up and answering these questions and so it's a really great tool for 
parties and for networking events and things like that um, f- to really start to get to know people on a deeper level beyond just the typical like, you know, who are you? What do you do? What's your job? You know, that kind of thing that's very typical in those environments. Um, so props to you, Aaron. So let's um, let's jump right in here. You know, what what was it that made you decide to start Cards for Connection? And how long did you kind of wrestle with that idea before you finally decide to just put it out there and really go for it. So put put simply, what what is your why? Totally. Well, um, it's kind of like, I mean, those those are two different questions to me. Okay. So my, my why is that the deepest problems in all of society, I believe stem from disconnection. Disconnection from ourselves, disconnection from each other and disconnection from our planet and our purpose. Right. And so that's my, that's my why. Like I really, I find that if, if, I mean, if we look at like homelessness and hunger and war and environmental issues, like really, if we go back all the way uh, to it, to the end of it, it seems like the root is this, this disconnection. So that's my big why is that that's, how to make the world a better place in the most profound way, I think. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's my why. And um, I guess, you know, why these got created. So um, have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? Uh, yes, I have a couple times. It's, um, it's interesting. Right? So, <laughs> it's a different kind of game. It's definitely a different kind of game. Um, and I, so I, I had played cards against humanity and I just, it just got less and less and less funny. Yeah. Um, and finally uh, it was my birthday. My, my birthday was coming up and, um, I just, I just, you know, woke up that morning and I was like, I can't play this game, uh, for my birthday. I don't want to play this with my friends. I want something better. And so right. that day I just made these cards on little slips of paper hmm. and uh, the first game was born. That was it. Um, and I didn't think, oh, I'm going to like make this a business or anything. I just wanted a better game to play for my birthday. Huh. And uh, it did. It took two years, two years to get the cards into print and um, do the first run and get those out to people. Um, and it took about, I would say for me to choose to do that, it was maybe almost a year later. So almost um, a year from whenever you, whenever you made them in the first place to actually like, you know what, this is, I really think there's something on this. Yeah, actually I would say, I would say it's about uh, like uh, maybe eight or nine months actually. It's a little less than a year. Okay. Um, that I was like, you know, I thought, well, I should actually print a deck. And I guess I, I say a year because at first I was just going to print a deck. And then I then I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe I could make a business out of it. Maybe I can, like, incorporate this into my business because I was running my own coaching business at the time. Um, so, yeah, it, it, did, it, took, it, it took nudging gently in that direction for a while before I decided to really pursue this and then it's only been a year now that i've been pursuing this full time okay so so you started um you started doing this full time about a year ago do you have people who are helping you with some of the logistics stuff like what does that look like for you Mm, i do i have some uh i have some people who i hire out on occasion Mm -hmm. um for specific things um like the design of the cards for example it's a really cool design can't see it Um, let's see if i can yeah there you go there we go so um i have a designer who uh helped me put that together um right now i have um, some people helping me with branding. And then just recently I hired someone to really help me with strategy. Um, I've got some very ambitious goals, uh, between now and the end of the year. And I decided after never having a business coach for myself and coaching people for years and years and years, uh, that I would finally, uh, you know, bite the bullet and get somebody who is cheering for me every day. Right. 
Very cool. How, how has that worked for you so far? That's, that's the, uh, it's great. I'm just a few weeks in and um, I think like four weeks in and she's awesome. Um, she really gets, I felt really connected to her. She really gets my messaging. Um, she understands like the bigger picture of what I'm, what I'm working on. Sure. Um, big, my big why she just, it's, she's the right vibe for me and has the right expertise. So I feel, yeah, I feel really happy about it. Very cool. So in terms of, um, you know, what has gone into building this out as a business for yourself, I know that you're doing a Indiegogo campaign right now. I know that you've, you know, been selling them whenever you go out to different events and things of that sort. So, you know, how would you recommend anyone who is trying to bring their own ideas to life? Like, what are some ways that you've gone about um, helping to develop those deeper connections with people whenever you're meeting them for the first time? I mean, obviously, you're using your card game. Um, but, you know, can you talk a little bit about just some of the, the mindsets that you've adopted over the years or things that you've found to be really effective to deepen those connections? Yeah, so the first thing is the connection to myself. Uh, I think this is the most important thing because the reason why I'm as far as I am is because I am tenacious. I'm really connected to my why and I know that this, like doing this work is, is a huge passion of mine. It falls within my purpose and it really keeps me going. So I think that's the first thing is connection to self. Uh, the next thing, as far as like mindset goes, is that I really approach, I approach oper uh, I approach things that are happening, like going to ecstatic dance or going to a potluck, like any sort of place. I approach it with an openness that you know I might meet someone who might be the perfect partner for me, who might make an amazing um, ambassador. For the cards for connection or maybe they have a podcast i could be on um i just oh i just walk into any of those situations really open to whatever possibility might be there and i and i ask questions i approach with curiosity because i don't know what those possibilities are um so i would say like openness curiosity and optimism hmm. um, really help kind of create, create the nice, the, the perfect environment to, to have deep connections with people. Right. So, and so basically don't go in with an agenda, go in being open to what might present itself. And if you find an alignment, then go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And also I would say another thing I learned that's really key, uh, and I still practice this myself, um, is to capture people's contact information one that's a big deal i carry a what i call my magical notebook of connection and uh i have people write down their information so that i can uh, follow back up with them uh and then the second thing is follow up is is being sure to follow up with those people and um you know allow that relationship to deepen and i would say that's really the biggest place where i've dropped the ball um, and i know a lot of people do is you know making making sure that we create these opportunities for us to continue that connection after that initial encounter. Right. So what is, what does that typically look like for you whenever you follow up? I mean, is that just a, Hey, it was great to meet you. Like, let's grab coffee or, you know, do a, a Skype call or something. I mean, what does that typically look like for you? Yeah. You know, it really depends on the kind of connection that it was. Um, so at minimum, it's like, okay, I'm adding you on Facebook. I'm adding you on Instagram. I'm sending you an invitation to join my email list. Sure. Um, you know, I'm send, sending you some sort of message through whatever uh, contact information it is. I mean, it might be a text message even, um, but it just says like, hey, it was really nice to meet you. Like, it was great to connect. Right. Um, for those for those, because I, and I do like, like, if you can imagine the volume of connections, Brian, this is why it's been a challenge for me and why I really need to like 
bring on some more people onto my team. Um, I'm the connectress, right? Right. <laughs> so, like, I have these, like, really powerful, deep connections with a whole lot of people. And so keeping them all straight, um, that is, that's, that's a really big challenge for me. And so asking people, you know, to share something about themselves, like engaging them in that follow-up connection sure. can help me see like what kind of pathways we might take. Maybe we will have lunch. Maybe, um, you know, maybe they've got some sort of really cool organization they're part of. Maybe I'll send them a free download of the deck, you know? Right. So have you, I mean, for me, I, I use a, a software called Trello that is excellent for keeping track of all of that stuff. I mean, I literally have a, I have a Trello board called lead generation where I'll literally bring in, you know, I'll put people's names and like, you know, little, little notes about my relationship with them. Mary B has joined says, Hey guys, Hey Mary, where are you at right now? Are you like in Ireland still or Europe or something awesome? I'm like stupid jealous right now. <laughs> Um, but, um, one of the cool things that I've found with that software is that you're basically able to organize, um, things into different lists. It's almost like Pinterest where you can kind of drag things around, drag and drop. Um, and so for me, that's one of the things that I've done, especially with my business is like, I'll, I'll meet somebody at an event or I'll get a, someone will contact us through our website and, um, I'm able to just take quick notes about that particular person, like how I met them or, you know, little nuances that I that I remember from my connection with them that help me the next time with my follow up. And so I can literally like put a date on that Trello card for that person that says, hey, Ryan, follow up with this person on this day. Um, so that's that's just, you know, something that I've done just because I've had to figure out how to how to handle it. But anyway, um, Mary says she's bopping around Europe. I'll have to check that program out. <laughs> Yeah, Very cool. yeah. I think Trello is a great tool, Ryan. I think that's an awesome tool. And really, I mean, there's a lot of really cool tools out there for entrepreneurs. And um, I would say, like, just find something that works really well for you. Uh, but the biggest thing is to actually use the tool that you choose. Yep. So that means you know, continuing to uh have that Trello board open and follow, like actually call those people or text those people. Right. Keep on updating that information every time you do it. The tool is only as good as you actually using it. Right. Which, which actually is, I think, a, a good segue into my next question here. Um, you know, how, how do you overcome the struggles that we all face as creators and entrepreneurs? Because I know for me, it's like we can get these, these grandiose ideas of all the things that we want to do, but then there's like nobody telling you which of those ideas that you should follow, which of them you should prioritize. And obviously you can talk to people and get coaches and whatever, but at the end of the day, you're the one that has to make that final decision. So how, how do you, how do you juggle that? Well, you know, the biggest thing I do is give myself priorities. I use a, a cool planner called the best self planner. Um, I'm kind of a nerd on time management. And uh, what I do is I choose like, what are my top three priorities for the next three months. So I do, I do, you know, three, 90 days at a time. And I choose like what my top three priorities are for that chunk of time. Mm -hmm. And then I, that's, that's like what I do every single week for that, those three months. Like I make sure that I'm focused in those areas and stuff that, you know, stuff does come up. That's like kind of a bonus link thing. Like for example, um, just recently, so I've had this thing on the back burner for a while, this, uh, a puppet character called Connectopus. And um, I, you know, I travel around and I talk to people and I, you know, I paint faces and I play cards with people. And I just had this vision of having this like super cool puppet that would just sit on my shoulder and <laughs> I would, you know, have an octopus hanging out with me also. 
And so I put it, you know, I put it off for a long time. It's like it's been present in my mind. But, you know, every once in a while, something will pop up as an opportunity. Sure. That's just the perfect timing. And so I would say, you know, I would say like it's like focus and flow and letting yourself go back and forth between the two of those things. So like connect to coming in. So I actually pushed the button. I got a, a Muppet creator just this week to um, actually create this custom puppet for me. That's awesome. And um, do you know why did I just thought, right? It's like, I mean, God, it is, it's really cool. <laughs> Um, but why did I decide to do that? You know, I've had this idea for a year now. Right. And why did I, you know, suddenly decide to do that? Well, basically, the timing just, it just felt right. Like, I could tell in my body that this was, um, you know, felt it felt expansive in my body. It felt like a really big yes. I could feel myself getting super excited about it. And... Um, you know, just like happenstance, I'm here in Portland and a friend of mine said, oh, I know someone who makes puppets and has worked for Cirque du Soleil and like, you know, worked on all these puppets. So um, it just, you know, the time, the timing just worked out. So I think there's something about allowing for, you know, flow state to come in and like things to pop up like that. Um, but also remembering like what my main focus is. I didn't let that like pull me off of my Indiegogo campaign, right? you know, or like stop doing that. It's like, oh, well, how can I incorporate this inspiration into my priorities that I have already and like what I'm doing? Right. So instead of creating like a whole separate other container for something, a different project, you're, you've kind of conditioned yourself to think, how can I leverage these additional ideas to kind of add to what I'm already doing and be another facet of what I'm doing and deepen that what I'm already doing as opposed to just being kind of like some offshoot entirely. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, it's like, it's a permaculture principle. Um, something is called stacking functions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I make sure that the things that I'm doing, uh, that I'm am able, that it, it like meets multiple needs at once. Right. Like, um, you know, to, I mean, I happen, I'm, I happen to be in a car between an ecstatic dance and a potluck and I'm doing this like podcast in the middle of it. Right? right. It's like, so I'm stacking function in the sense that like I'm have like multiple things scheduled in, but every one of those things meets both personal and professional needs that I have. I love connecting with you, Ryan. Like when I hang out with you and we chat, like I feel so inspired. I feel, I feel intelligent. Like I feel like we always have like really cool, like brain, massaging things to talk about <laughs> um and it just like, i enjoy your perspective right it like feels good to connect with you and so not only am i you know on a podcast kind of thing i get to connect with you and this is a project that you're doing another thing that is really valuable to me is to help my friends in their projects uh so I, i'm just making sure that like everything that i'm doing is in alignment with my big why Remember I talked about that before. Right. It's like, what, what's my purpose for being on the planet? It's not just like, oh, well, this is, you know, this is good for cards for connection. It's like, is this good for my purpose in being on the planet? Right. Very cool. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate the, yeah. I appreciate the compliments too. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> Words of affirmations. Yeah, well, you're awesome. Love you're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. Um, yeah. cool. All right. Well, um, let's, um, Mary, I, I'm, I'm curious. I know you're watching, um, if you have any questions or anything that are any things that are kind of, uh, percolating around in your head that you're wondering, I know that, um, Mary right now is doing, uh, her finding harmony tour. So she's all over Europe and she's playing music with, um, artists and musicians that she's never actually met in person before. Um, but she's doing this all over Europe and playing and just, there's some really cool connections happening. So Mary, if you've got anything that you'd like us to, to hit on, feel free to share that there. And Aaron, I don't know if, um, I don't, you might have to, to 
invite and share share this out if you have people that um, I don't know if it's actually posted on your page or not yet but um, other than that I hope so but if not I'll do it afterwards okay that's fine um, cool so in terms of um, you know just some of the practical aspects of things in terms of um, you know making sure that you're the you're stacking functions and you're doing things that are in alignment with um, with that big why and those priorities that you've set what what does your i love this question what does your ideal daily routine look like and how close is it to your actual daily routine mm, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love this question it gets me laughing uh, because right now i'm on tour and i'm traveling and most days i have no idea what is going to happen um it's what I'm, I've uh, coined the spontaneous connection to her. Okay. So there's a lot of spontaneity. I'm very much in flow state. Um, so my days right now look far less structured than they do when I'm at home. Sure. Um, I would say that my, my ideal day is like very much like a, a split between those. So, um, you know, I love to like when I wake up in the morning to have um, some like quality time with myself mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, get into my body, stretch, um, you know, do some kind of morning rituals, morning writing, meditation. Um, I love tea and coffee and having time to just enjoy all of that. Um, and then I usually go into like my more work day. Um, so usually, and like my ideal is that I schedule at least one 90 minute chunk of time where I spend 30 minutes on my three top priorities. Hmm. Um, so that actually is a time block looks like two hours because I have time uh, to take a break sure. at the end of that. Um, so at minimum every day, I want to be focused, uh, and move the ball a little bit on my top three priorities. And then the rest, then I'll usually have like a break or lunch or things like that. And then I'll spend the rest of the day on whatever that particular day's focus right. might be. So that might look, you know, meeting people or doing phone calls. Or maybe it's a more internal day where I'm working on content, uh, creation, things like that. Very cool. Well, I think um, that the nice thing about that, though, is is you set it up in a way where it's um, it's actually feasible. And it's like, oh, you know, 30, day, 30 minutes a day on a project, like if you actually do that in 30 days, you've spent a lot of time working on that thing and moving the ball forward. And, and so many people will look at content creation and running a business and you know running creative mission or whatever and they get so overwhelmed by all of the nuances and all of the different things that go on with it but i found myself too that even if i don't necessarily say oh i'm going to work on you know building my email list or you know working on my website or whatever if i just block out the time specifically say okay i'm going to sit down and work on this particular aspect of my business or priority or whatever it it almost like my subconscious ends up helping me figure out what i should work on when i actually sit down to do it and it's easier to get into flow state yeah. at least for me yeah that's really similar to what i do i usually have like a general like bucket mm -hmm. of thing that i'm doing um so it's like content creation so, and you guys probably know, like it, making content could look a lot of different ways. Like that could be a photo shoot or making a video or, 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 or right. There's right. so many different things. And so, um, for me, I, I chunk out the time by like the kind of the topic mm -hmm. and then the task, I just let that really be variable to the moment of what's most important. Very good. Very cool. I find that that's that's pretty consistent a lot across a lot of people that I've interviewed. So it's it's just always fascinating to me because we all have different missions and and different methods and things of that sort. But I do find that a lot of the principles and a lot of the mindsets um, are very consistent across a lot of different spectrums. So very cool. 
Um, Mary, uh, Mary asked, what is the best thing you have learned this past year that helps your creative mission? The best thing in the past year. Uh, to trust myself and trust the universe. So what does that look like for you? Um, so I go through moments of like self-doubt. Like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Or I don't know, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go next. Or I don't know what's going to happen. Like even this past week, like I feel amazing today. Uh, but I got to be honest. Um this last week, like I've had some real struggle in my life and it really wasn't until like yesterday um, and maybe the day before yesterday a little bit that things really like shifted and turned around uh, for how I was feeling. And, um, you know, we all struggle. We all have fear. We all have moments of doubt. And um, for me, it's just like learning to be patient with myself through that. Um, so allow the fear to be there, but like not to like control me. Right. Um, and just to take that time to like really like do a lot of good self care and be patient and then just trust that like the path will make itself really clear. And every time, every time it does, like all of a sudden, you know, I gave myself the, the permission to just take care of myself and move a little slower this past week. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my friend, Captain Pat, who I showed you guys before, he, he's like, I'll come, to, I'll come to Portland tonight. Oh, we'll go to Ecstatic Dance tomorrow. And this whole other thing that I had planned, it's like, oh, I'm actually like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, you know, just follow the flow. But just it's, it's that trusting that it's going to show up and that I keep my, my heart open for that and my eyes open for that. Uh, just helps me really tap into that creativity uh, and that spontaneity, but I need to be open to it first. I can't like force it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and the self care aspect is, is something that I think that every creator um, and everyone who's trying to do pretty much anything is, is benefited by, by really asking like, you know, what, what does self care look like for me? I know for me, it's, it's giving myself at least a couple hours after I wake up in the morning to, to just kind of get in my zone and get breakfast and get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, do some exercise, you know, really taking care of some of the basic things, because I don't know about you or any of you guys watching or, or listening. Um, the temptation is really, really strong when you first wake up in the morning to pull the phone out and just start looking at the screen and scrolling and, and ingesting everyone else's thoughts and all the other things and the drama that's going on in the world. It's super easy to just reach for it after your alarm goes off or something and be like, oh, you know, I wonder what's happening on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Reddit or, you know, any of these bazillions of places where we can just get inundated with a fire hose of information before we even allow ourselves to wonder, hey, what am I thinking about today? And I find that for me, I get in the creative flow state a lot faster and a lot better if I don't look at that stuff, if I don't check my email first thing in the morning, and if I'm like, wake up and do some journaling or, you know, run around the block, go for a walk or something like that, and then really being open to those kind of connections and, and the, the flow state that comes as a result of that. So that's, that's how I do it. Um, so that's a great reminder, Ryan. Um, I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I've been doing that for quite some time now and I didn't even think to say it. And it, that really actually was a big game changer for me that I just stopped putting myself on everyone else's agenda and that I'm really tapped into my own creative spirit. Right. Well, and it's, it's really easy because the, the dopamine hit that you get from, you know, consuming new information will always be there. And it's one of those things where just knowing the world will continue to spin 
and things are going to continue happening that I have zero control over. But I'm always asking myself, what are the things I do have control over? What are the kind of con what's the kind of content that I can put out that's going to leave the world a little bit better than I found it today? Um, and Ma uh, Mary just said, totally. My new rule lately is no phones for 30 minutes after waking up. It is life changing. Phone while sleepy is instant stress and anxiety for me. Absolutely. Um, so. If you're watching and you're do it, just ask yourself, like, what does your daily routine look like? What do you actually do? And is it actually leading you to the kind of results that you want to have for yourself? Because if it's not, why not? I think it's worth asking. No, that's all. Um, okay, so pretty cool. Um, Thing that I've found over the years is that everyone I talk to who is doing creative things at various levels always almost well at least almost always they are very avid readers of a number of different books or you know they consume different podcasts and things of that sort so I'm curious Aaron for you um, what are some of the best books that you've read for um, not just for creators and entrepreneurs but um, just as a kind of life-changing reads for you yeah, I'll say, so I'm actually not even done with this book yet, but uh, it's already been super, super awesome for me. Big Magic I was gonna uh, bring by that Elizabeth yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Um, I would say for anybody who does creative work or works for themselves, um, I'm, you know, I'm not even, I mean, I, I think I'm like halfway through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like so many awesome nuggets uh, and great reminders for me. Um, so I've really, really been enjoying her. Uh, I also, I tend to be like a, like a, I listen to like YouTube, uh, like videos or like kind of podcasty things. Um, Gary V is pretty fun. Um, I like to listen to him to get kind of pumped up about my entrepreneurship. Um, he does pretty good. And, um, I mean, whenever you have anything on Ryan, I really like to listen to you. You always have great people on and really great topics. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, interesting story. I, yesterday I, my wife and I went down to our downtown area and we're, um, we we're just taking a walk and there was this guy down there who had a, had a cello and several like beat making, um, devices. I think there's their, um, I can't remember the, the brand of whatever they were. Um, but he had kind of like this hip hop electronic beat going, and then he was playing his cello along with it. I don't know if you're familiar with Lindsay Sterling, any of her kind of style of music. Um, but it was, um, he was just playing like out in public and I went over to him and I, told him I thought it was really good and I, I asked if he had a card and so he gave me his business card so he's this traveling cellist who goes all over the all over the west coast he's been in Vegas and San, uh, Sacramento and San Jose and you know all these different places um, I think he was in Portland recently too um, but whenever he gave me his card I gave him mine and he looks at it and then looks at me and he's like I have your book <laughs> and I was like what <laughs> And so it was this moment of, I was like, it really kind of surprised me and it, cause it's, I was totally unexpected. He's like, oh yeah, I was, I've been, you know, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm reading your book. And I was like, well, I don't think I've ever seen you before. I, how did you get my book? Like, are you following me on Facebook? You know what I mean? Um, and so apparently he had gotten it from this other guy that I had seen who was playing piano uh, about a year ago in my downtown area. Um, he, the guy was just playing piano or a keyboard and I had a copy of my book in my in my trunk and I'm like, hey, you know, we got an entrepreneur, you know, musician out here. And so I, I just gave him a copy of my book because I thought he, he might enjoy it. And that guy ended up passing the book on to this dude. And he's like, oh yeah, I have your book. So it was, just this weird connection um and now you know we're connected on instagram and that kind of thing and so kind of going along the lines of what you're saying about just really staying open to that that 
what Elizabeth Gilbert would call that big magic and those spontaneous connections because, you know, we can, I know for me, I can get into these spaces of like, okay, well, almost like tunnel vision. Like this is what I need to accomplish. This is how I need to accomplish it. But if you're not allowing yourself space to breathe and, and leading into those spontaneous moments, you just miss them entirely. So do you have any tips for people who are, uh, maybe struggling with that or people who are wanting to have more of those magical connections, but um, maybe haven't had them in a while. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So number one is self care. So self care, obviously you want to like take care of your basic needs and um, you know, get your body feeling good. Like those basic kind of physiological needs, um, take care of that kind of stuff. But also remember that fun and human connection are just as important as those other needs. So if you're not having a good time, like something needs to change. Like take yourself to the park, take yourself to the movies, whatever it is. Uh, because if, if like whenever I'm not nurturing those parts of myself and I'm not having fun, like I don't see the stuff. I don't see the opportunities for play. I don't show up in my magnetic, like charismatic self, hmm. right? So I think that's a super, super important uh, tip is just to make sure that we're having fun because sometimes the best thing that we can do for our work is to set the work aside completely and just, you know, enjoy nature or enjoy our significant other or go to the park with the dog, like whatever, whatever it is that brings you joy, like, that is that that nurturing that is just as important as checking your email and returning those phone calls like you know you got to you got to take care of yourself i would say that that's that's the number one thing that i see that is off with people and then as soon as they get that back on it's just it's like it's like a night and day switch of oh yeah oh yeah i mean i mean i see it in myself and i see it with my clients all the time you know you it's like either it's like the self care, like people will sacrifice so that they're, you know, they're not eating properly or they're not getting enough sleep. Like that's the first place to look. Um, and then the second place to look is fun. Like actually enjoying yourself, having a good time doing things. Like for example, for me, like I make these cards, I do a lot of content. Um, I don't do a lot of dancing and singing like on, camera like it doesn't necessarily directly sure. help me sell the cards i mean sometimes a little bit <laughs> um here well we can do let's let's do a little dance right now so we'll do a little dance okay now go to in uh cards for connection.com and support aaron's indiegogo campaign <laughs> so <laughs> oh yeah perfect so, perfect so we, can, um, we can make dance yeah, help support so we, the mission we can make it support the mission, but I'll just say that, like, even if it doesn't look like it, like, nourishing that creative part of myself helps me be able to find creative solutions and, like, make the other content that actually does pay the bills. Yeah. Um, but I need to feel, like, you know, juiced up and excited. And I love to sing. I love to dance. And so if I'm doing those things really regularly, that keeps all the rest of my creativity flowing too. Right. Well, Mary, Mary just said, I don't know about you guys, but in those non-work moments, that's when my best business related ideas just pop into my head out of nowhere. Yeah. And you know, yep. that's, exactly. um, there's a, a really great book that came out relatively recently. It's just called rest. Why you get more done when you work less by Alex Sujung Kim Pong. Um, he's a futurist and a PhD guy in, um, in Silicon Valley who basically studied all of this stuff about uh, all these different studies and research um, experiments on rest and sleep and creativity and productivity. And basically all the conclusions and all of the research continues to show that the standard, you know, 40 plus hour work week is actually detrimental to productivity, that it's detrimental to creativity and innovation because it, yeah. you know, we typically are able to focus 
on projects and things of that sort for about 90 minutes at a time um, before we start, you know, scrolling and looking for something else to do and whatever. And so he found through studying all of these high performers that basically the really high performing people across all kinds of spectrums, it didn't matter if they were journalists or athletes or entrepreneurs or whatever, that they all have built in this kind of wave and flow and ebb and flow of uh, creative sprints and intentional rest. And so when I say rest, I don't just mean like sleeping seven or eight hours a night, which is super important, but also like going and playing basketball, going and doing some dance or, you know, doing things that, that are fun for you that allows your your brain and your subconscious to kind of digest all of the other stuff that you've been doing and kind of like mary said to allow those ideas to just pop into your head whenever you're not necessarily thinking or trying to make things happen yep so right on ryan this is this is totally true i hope all of our folks at home who watch this and reminding myself too like whenever i feel stuck like that is probably a really good sign that I need to go for a walk and do something fun. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay. Um, well, that's honestly about all of the questions that I had. Um, so unless there's any other questions that any of you guys who are watching have right now, or Aaron, if you have, um, if you have anything that you specifically want to share as opposed uh in terms of like specific tips or pointers i know we've talked a lot about self-care and the importance of having fun um and to in order to really build and develop those deeper connections with people who are what who are paying attention to what you're already doing but any additional thoughts that you, you have just off the top of your head yeah i just want to reiterate um you know as far as like connecting with other people connecting with your audience and other people who care about similar things um, I, I really think like using the using your own curiosity um, and just like deploying that with people as much as possible, asking a lot of questions, um, asking follow up questions with people, like really engaging people. This is true for social media, for networking situations, like all the different places that you go to. Right. Um, just curiosity breeds connection and i just want us to remember that like like the more curious we are about the other people and the more questions that we ask the more points of connection that we can create between us and others and that is a bridge to collaboration and to having really meaningful moments uh, to share together so can you give me an example uh recently in, in your own life how you've how you've leveraged that Mm. Um, yeah, actually, I, <laughs> gosh, there's a couple, there's a couple of different ones. I'm going to go with the practical one. Um, so yesterday, um, or over the past few days, I've been having like some kind of light conversation with Captain Pat and, um, you know, just like, oh, how are you doing? Like a quick little check-in. Sure. But I really started asking him, I started like texting him and asking him like a lot more questions about what was going on in his life, what was happening, like just really diving a lot deeper. And the ultimate response was that he decided to actually drive to Portland to meet me like on the spur of the moment because we just had such a great connection. From this where? It wasn't a planned thing. It's just like... He was up in um, Spokane, Washington. Oh, wow. Very cool. So, yeah, so, you know, it was a good drive. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and also on the spur of the moment, you know, it was like he he drove. Yeah, he drove last night and it, he wasn't planning to drive to Portland yesterday, like until the evening when we talked. Hmm. Um, and that really just came out of a conversation where I was just really curious about what he's been up to and also about how him and I could work together like more effectively to support each other, like intentionally as allies. Hmm. And then that's, that's what came out of it. That's, I mean, the, the willingness, I think to kind of add on to that too, the, 
the willingness to not only be curious, but also the the willingness to be open to those ideas and those opportunities as they come up. Because a lot of times it's kind of like the the spontaneity aspect of things, I think, can kind of can really get lost um, whenever you're trying to build an audience or whenever you're trying to. Um, you know, bring any kind of idea or project to life because you kind of, like I said before, you can get this tunnel vision idea. But a lot of times it is those connections that happen whenever you're engaging in that curiosity and that spontaneity. Those are the things that actually will move you forward and move the needle beyond where you're currently at. And so training yourself to, I mean, build that into your life. And, and I mean, I have, I have whiteboards and stuff all over my office where I'm, I'm, I have a, a big, you know, purple marker, it says, does this content create connection, you know, with a giant question mark. And so it's like, I have these questions and these little trigger phrases that I'm always trying to keep in front of my mind. um, So that if I feel like I'm getting stuck, I can literally sit back in my chair. And, and then I see that and it's like, Oh, you know, does this content create connection? Um, Am I doing what I'm really great at? Am I doing what, um, you know, really makes me come alive because whenever I'm doing that, I know it gives other people permission to do the same. And that creates even more connection and curiosity and spontaneity. So Mm -hmm. do you have, um, do you have any, uh, I'm just curious, like at at your own, your own space, your own office or your home or whatever, like what the, what do you, what are the kind of things that you hang on your walls? (laughs) Oh gosh. Um, so I love whiteboards. I love post-it notes and I love, I'm I'm really visual. So I love things that are made of rainbows. Um, so I have to some people, my walls might look really chaotic. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I just have so much, so much stuff for me. It's like, it's where, it's where I dump out my brain and um, I have a, I have really clear systems of how I organize all my ideas. Um, I'm a systems thinker, a pattern thinker. Um, so I tend to see things in a very, very broad perspective. So I have, I basically have like a giant grid on my wall and um, I just, dump out my ideas on it periodically and then I often will do it um, on post-it notes so I can rearrange it and uh, put it together in different ways like see the different relationships between things and um, so it looks pretty it looks pretty messy probably to the outside uh, viewer but for me it's just a really great place for for me to come back to like to kind of keep ideas in a place where I can use them later and to remind Mm. myself of the things that are most important to me. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it gives you the opportunity to, to keep those ideas front of mind while letting them percolate. That's kind of how I, or like, it's almost like an incubation phase because I know for me, um, I've got, I've got a big whiteboard on my left here. I've got two big ones on my, on my right. Um, and for those of you who don't know, if you're, if you have some space in your home or your office, you can actually go to, um, like office Depot or Lowe's and get them to cut and measure whiteboard panels for you for like less than $20 that will actually take up a significant amount of wall space. Um, so you don't have to like go and, uh, you know, buy an expensive big whiteboard at an office Depot or something like that. You can actually get them cut and they're just tell them you need whiteboard panels um a lot of times they'll use them in people's showers and stuff like that so you, they might have a different name um but they work really awesome and but being able to have that stuff in front of you and creating those systems for yourself is super super important um and like aaron said earlier guys if you're trying to make something happen um you have to figure out what works for you nobody you know i i love bringing people on who have different perspectives to kind of inspire you to think on your own, like, you know, take some ideas from this one, take some ideas from this person, because ultimately you're the one that is going to be championing your idea the most. And so Aaron, for uh, just to kind of wrap this up, I guess, um, you know, do you have any pointers for people who are um, maybe feeling stuck with their, uh, 
feeling stuck with actually taking the leap because I know a lot of people that, that watch and, and listen to my content, they're, they're in that space where they're like percolating on the idea. I would say probably kind of like where you were before you actually decided, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's do this thing full time uh, with your cards for connection. So, you know, any thoughts for that, taking that jump? Yeah, um, the first thing is, um, well, stop giving yourself a hard time if you're judging yourself or having a side hustle and just doing this part time. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, it's totally awesome to have whatever job you have and then, you know, be pursuing your business on the side. Um, I think that there's such a, a celebration of entrepreneurs, like, it's really cool right now. And, um, you know, you don't, I just want to give you permission. Like you don't have to rush yourself. Like you'll know when you're ready because it will be simultaneously terrifying, but you will feel like you have to do it. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I, well. I just, like have to do this next step. And when that happens, like, yes, take the leap and, and do it. But you don't have to, you know, you don't have to rush yourself into that if you've got you know if you've got another job that's totally that's totally fine but when it's time like you'll you'll know because it'll i mean at least for myself like i almost felt like i was gonna die if i didn't just go all in i mean it really it was like there's it's it was like there was no choice um and I, i've talked to you know a lot of entrepreneurs who are you know, in that same, in that same kind of boat. So like, you know, jump when it's time to jump, um, you know, don't rush yourself, but then also, you know, trust yourself, you know, when you're doing it, it's really look at the, look at like the, the basics of what it is that you really need. Um, you know, if you're not, if you can't pay your basic bills, um, with what you're doing, like, find a way for you to be able to do that that might look like doing it you know a side another side job um to support yourself but there's no reason you know you don't have to you don't have to go all in or give up yeah it's not it's not like a binary a choice spectrum. yeah yeah there's a whole spectrum for people so i would say like you know just be tenacious keep on moving forward towards your goals and you know, as you do that, it will just become apparent for when it's time for you to to go all in on it. I mean, honestly, like the cards for connection, like I've been I've been working on this for more than four years. We're coming up on four and a half years. Um, and that's really quick, honestly, uh, for a for a business to really. I mean, I've run my own business before, so it's like pretty fast for that for that to happen. Um, yeah, I would say that's, pro that's probably the biggest thing. I see people giving themselves a really hard time for not already having done it. And I just want to say it's okay. It's I've, okay. I've heard it said, a um, at a time. I've heard it said like, don't compare somebody else's chapter eight with your chapter one. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, especially for with the way the internet is like, you know, most people are, are sharing their, their mountaintop experiences, so to speak. It's like, Hey, I'm here. I've accomplished this thing, but a lot, there's not a whole lot of people who are confident enough in where they're going to show the process and show, Hey, I know that I'm not where I want to be yet but this is where I'm going and here's where I'm at right now. What do you think? And, and I really like that about um, Gary Vaynerchuk's content because he says, document, don't create, you know, don't, don't spend so much time stressing out on trying to create this perfect thing that you don't actually share and connect with the people who are already paying attention and already cared it, you know, listen to what you have to say. So. Yeah, I think that's really great. That's really great advice. Um, I see also on the, the flip side of people giving themselves a hard time about it is like the people who are waiting and waiting and waiting until it's perfect. Right. And, you know, we, we don't need to do that either. Just, you know, show up, share what you got, like share what is right now and go from there. 
you well, know? Well, people, people I mean, appreciate authenticity. Yeah, they, they appreciate authenticity and they also love watching the process. And especially with the fact that we literally have um, like full scale production studios in our pockets or in our purse, like there's so much opportunity yeah. to create that you don't have to have it all polished. I mean, you know, us doing this this fun thing with this digital set here, like the first the first version that I did, uh, Heather Goldman says hello. Hi Heather, how's it going? Um, the first version of this set that I did was literally just this idea and it actually, it look, kind of looked like I was sitting in a, um, a Chinese food takeout box because the, the desk that I drew was didn't look like a desk. <laughs> um, and so with every iteration of this show that I do, I try, I just have made a, a decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take the pressure off myself and try and improve the digital set at least a little bit with every, with every episode. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's fun for me to be able to actually look back at the production quality of some of the earlier episodes and seeing things that I would change or whatever, but that just shows growth and people love seeing that and people want to be able to uh cheer you on as you're in process um and i think that if you know that people I, I remember i was listening to a, a an interview that arnold schwarzenegger did a number of years ago um somebody had asked him like you know what's one thing that you wish that people knew about the kind of you know doing their own thing and, and one of the things that he said really stuck with me um he was like your your audience wants to see you succeed like so many people are afraid of getting putting themselves out there because they think that, oh what if i fail what if people make fun of me or whatever and it's like people want to see you succeed and you just have to create the container that allows them to see you doing that Yeah, and I think it's also responsible to, like, let people see, like, what it really takes, you know, yep. and be real about that. And success doesn't look like you get everything right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not real. Like, they, they, what is it they say? It's like an overnight success is, like, 10 years in the making. Yeah, actually, I am um, <laughs> on that note. There's... um. <laughs> My, my first book, <laughs> Stop Wasting Time and Burning Money, um, I have a quote from, I think it's Biz Stone, who is one of the co-founders of Twitter. Um, he said, timing, perseverance, and 10 years of trying will eventually make you look like an overnight success. <laughs> and so, that, you know, yes. <laughs> just, and if you know that going in, it really takes the pressure off. And, you know, it's yeah. it's something that um, uh, uh, my friend Nicole said, I would love to see more of us succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I, I was actually, I met with somebody here in, in Salem a couple days ago who's um, pretty well known in the community and pretty well connected. Um, and we were talking about success and just building your business and, and really how to how to get that thing going especially if you don't know a lot of people in the area. And one of the things that she said really resonated with me. She said, success always happens in community. And whether that's, you know, it doesn't matter if that's your, your work community, your community of friends, your family, your church, you know, political organizations, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's like success doesn't happen in a vacuum. Um, and if you can figure out how to tap into like you said, Aaron, you know, really working with people who want to see you succeed and being willing to um, people who are willing to drive several hours, you know, spontaneously just to see, yep. hey, what can we build together? Like those are the people, yep. the ones that are listening right now before you're hitting this, you know, big level of success, whatever that's supposed to mean. The people who are already paying attention, I'm always asking myself, how can I create more content and connection with those people? because those yep. are the ones that really matter. It's like anybody can yep. show up and say, hey, you know, let's let's hang out whenever they see that you're pulling in several million dollars a year. Um, it's the people who are, are championing you before you get to that 
that really it's like there's there's deep connection there and that's what i want to cultivate yes so yep <laughs> yep <laughs> oh Ryan, this has been really fun absolutely thank you for coming on um so guys that's um Aaron, unless you have anything else, um, you know, I think we can wrap it up. It's been a little over an hour here. Awesome. Well, I do want to do a shout out um, right now. I am doing a crowdfund campaign on Indiegogo. Um, we've got just a couple weeks left to hit fifteen thousand dollars and my secret stretch goal of thirty three thousand dollars. And um, no longer, so this secret. weekend is actually this is awesome. Yeah, it's my secret stretch goal. It's basically, um, I'm building a team uh, to help me get into retail stores for the holidays and really get these decks into the hands and hearts of people all over the world. And I need a team to do it. So um, I am raising money on Indiegogo. And this weekend's a great time to give. I've got a matching uh, donor for this whole weekend through Labor Day. So Every dollar that anybody contributes this weekend, not only do you get yourself an awesome deck of the Cards for Connection, you also uh, will essentially be giving me $2 for every dollar that you give uh, towards the campaign. So it's a great time to give. I'll drop that link in the comments below so you can scoop up a deck of your own. I also have it in the, the video description as well. So Yes, 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 yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Very welcome. Very cool. Um, so, uh, where can where can people connect with you? Hint: It's on the giant sign underneath your video here. But <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Cardsforconnection.com is my website. Um, I really like that website, especially since you helped me uh, upgrade the design a little bit. Um, it was and fun. you can also find me on any social media. Uh, Cards for Connection. Okay, very cool. Well, Aaron, um, again, thanks so much for, for hopping on here. Um, guys, real quick, if you haven't already, make sure to sign up for our VIPs list. The link is down there with those fun little creatures uh, on either side that my friend Brent Metcalf drew. Um, and you can go to reformdesigns.biz slash VIPs to sign up for our email list. And I send out uh, semi-regular tips and emails to my VIPs list, as well as uh, deals and special content that uh, I don't share publicly. Also, if you have, um, if you do sign up for that, you'll get a free digital copy of my first book. It's called Stop Wasting Time and Burning Money, How to Crush Procrastination and Live the Life of Your Dreams. Uh, it comes with a workbook. It's really great for helping people who are struggling with overcoming the, the distractions that a lot of us can run into on a daily basis. And last but not least, make sure to go to scienceofgettingrich.info to get a copy of my latest book, Science of Getting Rich, How to Think, How to Act, and what to do to harness your creative potential. And just one more final hint, if you do need help bringing your own ideas to life, maybe that's a logo or a business or a nonprofit, um, pretty much if you can see it or hear it, we can probably make it. So go to www.reformdesigns.biz and set yourself up with a free consultation and we will see what we can do to make your ideas happen. So. Aaron, always a pleasure. Um, hang on here. I'll, uh, I'll after I wrap up the video, and we'll just um, do a little bit of debriefing. But for the rest of you, thanks so much for your time, your attention, your love, your support. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. Um, or if you're listening via our podcast, you can send me a message via our website at reformdesigns.biz. That's all I have for this episode. Thanks again. We love you, and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.